Hello and welcome to another historic brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black, and red or Grixis colored pirates deck featuring Admiral Brass Unsinkable, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 5 mana commander is a 3 3. When it enters, it mills 4 cards, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, we may return a target pirate creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So if it does get removed, it will get exiled instead of going back to the graveyard. It has a base, power, and toughness 4 4, and it gains haste until end of turn. So Admiral Brass is quite the beating, especially if you can play it ahead of schedule, thanks to some of our early mana accelerators, various ramp artifacts or treasure tokens. And then the rest of our deck is basically all pirates. That's the main section you can see here at the start of our curve. And then we've got some mana acceleration to try and play Admiral Brass ahead of schedule. And then at the miscellaneous section, which has more synergy with pirates, some very efficient interactive cards, which are also nice to have. So let's start with the pirate section, where at one mana we've got Siren Storm Tamer, can also help protect our commander against removal if we've got a spare mana. Spectral Sailor can be flashed in, maybe draw extra cards later, and any of these 1-drops is still quite nice to get back with Admiral Brace, since they will be upgraded to 4-4 four, four creatures, so in this case a 4-4 four, four flyer is quite nice. Then there's a Spyglass Siren making a map token, and then Exploring is also a way of filling the graveyard with additional pirates, so we don't run out for Admiral Brace. Changeling Outcast is a shapeshifter, so it also counts as a pirate and cannot be blocked, so a nice 4-4 four, four unblockable potentially. Then there's a Grasping Scoundrel, getting one extra power if it's attacking, so it can go up to 5 power that way. Daring Buccaneer, just another cheap pirate we can play as a 2-2 if we reveal a pirate from our hand. The Fanatical Firebrand can deal 1 when sacrificed, so if we do run out of pirates in the graveyard, we can still sacrifice it and then bring it back as a 4-4 potentially. And then there's a Tomb Raider, which grows with an artifact in play. And then a Ragavan, of course, also a pirate, so this is great if you can play it early and connect. And then a Rigging Runner has a raid, so we want to attack first and then put it in play with an extra plus one plus one counter. Then at two mana, we continue with a Departed Deckhand, which is also difficult to block for most decks. And then a Malcolm is awesome, as it can draw and discard if it connects with the opponent, and that's a way of putting expensive pirates in the graveyard that we can then maybe reanimate with Admiral Brace. There's the Staunch Crewmate, which can find another artifact or pirate when it enters. A Warkind Marauder can shrink something down when it attacks, so it makes it easier for us to keep attacking. Although, do keep in mind, Admiral Brass triggers even without it attacking. It just triggers at the beginning of combat, so we don't have to attack with our commander necessarily. Then we've got the Dire Fleet Poisoner, which can be used as a trick, giving one of our attacking pirates plus one plus one and death touch. And of course, a 2-2 death touch itself can also set up an ambush. Then there's the Captain, which can make additional pirate tokens if we make two mana, and they all have a menace. There's the Freebooter, which can maybe take away an important non-creature spell from the opponent's hand, can try and take away removal or sweeper effects, and check if the coast is clear for Admiral Brace. Then there's the Dire Fleet Daredevil, which can maybe get something back from the opponent's graveyard. Kari Zav can make a 2-1 attacking Ragavan token when it attacks, so that can represent 6 damage with Admiral Brace. There's the Stormfleet Swashbuckler with Ascent, so if we have 10 or more permanents in play, we reach the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. And then the Swashbuckler will have Double Strike, so potentially a 4-4 Double Strike can also hit incredibly hard. Captain Storm synergizes quite well with all the artifacts in the deck, giving us additional plus one counters. A Dire Fleet Captain's also great in an aggressive pirate deck, getting plus one plus one until end of turn for each other attacking pirate, so that can also stack on top of being a 4-4. And then Metallic Mimic doesn't start out as a pirate, so we can't actually reanimate it with Admiral Brace, but then once it enters, it can name Pirate, and then other pirates will enter with an additional plus one plus one counter. And then at three mana, there's the Burdened Aerialist, a 3 1 that makes a treasure when it enters, so that can also set up a turn for Admiral Brace. And then whenever we sacrifice a token, the Aerialist does gain flying until end of turn. We've got Corsair Captain also making a treasure when it enters, giving other pirates we control plus one plus one, so a nice anthem effect for the deck. Got the Kite Sail Larcenist, could also turn one of our own creatures into a treasure alongside an opposing artifact or creature, so it can act as removal and in a way can also help us ramp out a turn for Admiral Brace. There's Sailor of Means, 1 4 making a treasure token. We've got Forerunner of the Coalition, which can tutor up any pirate in our deck and put it on top, and whenever another pirate enters, we get to drain the opponent for 1. 
A Ruin Raider can provide extra card advantage with Raid, losing its life equal to its mana value. Breaches is perfect here as well, making extra treasures when our pirates attack, can prevent the opponent from blocking, and exile the top card for extra card advantage. And then a Lannery Storm also great to play on curve, as we get to make extra treasure tokens and maybe set up Admiral Branch on the following turn. And then it also picks up one more power whenever we sacrifice a treasure token. I did include Crucius, even though it's not a card that exists in paper, but it's still incredibly synergistic here as a pirate that can help ramp out Admiral Brass. And then we've got a Dreamcaller Siren at 4 mana, can tap things down if we flash it in, so it can maybe tap down some ramp artifacts from the opponent or creatures, making it easier for us to keep attacking. Zephyr Singer can also give our creatures flying if we convoke it. We've got Hostage Taker as more removal, that can also exile opposing artifacts and creatures that we can then play if we've got the mana for it. And then a neckbreaker pumps our attacking pirates, so that can also represent a lot of extra damage. And then of course we've got the original Admiral back at Brass pumping up our pirates, and if we somehow manage to connect with three or more pirates, we can steal an opposing permanent as well, which is quite fun. And then uh, last but not least, the Angras Marauders, which is pretty expensive to cast at 7 mana, so for the most part we're hoping to mill it or maybe discard it to some of our effects to then reanimate with Admiral Brass, and then it will double our damage output, so that can also be quite deadly. And then taking a look at our mana acceleration, we are running Dark Ritual to try and set up those early explosive starts with Admiral Brass. We've got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Mind Stone, and the Iron Crag at 2 mana. Then I'm running Black Market Connections, which can also make a treasure token, helping set up turn for Admiral Brass. Can also make Shapeshifters, which will count as pirates, so it has perfect synergy throughout. And then a Herald's Horn and Naming Pirate also gives us a nice discount and maybe provide a bit more card advantage. And Worn Power Stone, also kind of too good to ignore, making two mana if we get to untap with it. And then the miscellaneous section has some efficient interaction, such as a wash away, a one mana counter for opposing commanders, a duress and a thought seize to try and take away opposing interaction, fatal push, a one mana removal spell can easily enable revolt by sacrificing a treasure token, for instance, a lightning bolt can deal three at instant speed, and then a lookout dispersal, another counter spell getting a discount from controlling a pirate. Cannonade dealing two to each non-pirate creature can also be an effective board wipe in some matchups. Fell Flagship, a vehicle that maybe helps us play around sweeper effects a bit better, bumps up all our pirates, and if it connects with the opponents we can also make them discard. Crippling Fear, similar to Cannonade, names pirate, and then all non-pirates get minus three minus three until end of turn. We've got a Roaming Throne, one of the more exciting additions from the Lost Caverns, as we get to double our triggers from our various pirates, including our commander. And then a Kindred Discovery and Vanquisher's Banner are great 5 mana ways of drawing additional cards, especially Discovery if we already have some pirates in play can draw a ton, but Banner also pumps up all our pirates. And then a Time Warp also great in a more aggressive deck, where we might be ahead on board and then we can set up a lethal attack over the course of 2 turns. And then a mana base has lots of mana fixing, of course, for a three-color deck, trying to play as many untapped lands so we can curve out smoothly. And then we've got the various lands naming a creature type, including the new Cavern of Souls, which can make our creatures uncounterable. And then I'm also running Mutavolt as a creature land, since it does have all creature types, including Pirate, so it can also have some nice synergy throughout. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gishoth, Sun's Avatar. So having wash away as a one mana counter is great, but if we don't have blue mana we won't be able to cast it and the rest of our hand doesn't do much. So I'm gonna have to mulligan this one sadly. This is a bit better. Turn two either captain or deckhand. And turn three horn. To discount our pirates, set up turn four, Admiral Brass. Yeah, can go for deckhand for now. Now Regisaur is next. This only dies if it's targeted by a spell and not an ability. So glad we didn't play Captain at one toughness. So play Horn. And name Pirate. And smash. Could also try to double spell. And then Siren and the opponent's upkeep could tap down a Cold Steel Hearts. 
for now Drover. The only problem is if we play Captain, then I'm kind of forced to tamp down the Regisaur. Otherwise, they can uh, just take it out. Once we play back at Brass, then uh, we can give it plus one plus one. So it might just be best to play Admiral Brass, although our opponent might have removal at the ready here, and given their sequencing. So I think I'm back to play Captain, and then Siren in the opponent's upkeep, tapping a Regisaur, and I guess Drover is fine. Alright, no removal end of turn. I should have put an upkeep stop. Now it's a little bit too late, since I can still tap Drover for mana. Could also use Siren to tap down Gishoth the turn they play it, but... I guess we'll do this now. Tap two of their creatures. They can still make mana, but at least they won't be triggering Doors of Durin now. And they didn't have a use for the one mana, so we didn't get punished, luckily. Okay, so this is our opportunity to maybe deploy back at Brass. And then we'll have three pirates attacking, so we can immediately trigger back at Brass's ability. Alright, what do we want to steal? Um, maybe a Doors of Durin. That seems reasonable. Could also take away Mana Source so they can't play Gishoth as easily. So that was quite the swing. Tap things down, opponent doesn't get to trigger Doors, and then we steal it before they get a chance to. Opponent's now at 11 as well, so under quite a bit of pressure. And we haven't played our commander yet. Had I played Siren in the opponent's upkeep, tapping their two creatures, they definitely would not have played Doors without being able to trigger it right away. So maybe it actually worked out in our favor. So seven mana, still one away from Gishoth. If they can kill back at Brass and attack with Regisaur, they can finish off Captain. But no, looks like our opponent's too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Malcolm, so a mono-blue deck with probably lots of counter spells. So Larsenist could line up okay, but it's probably not going to resolve. And we're missing red mana. A bit light on the early pressure, I guess Captain isn't bad, since we can just spend two mana making pirate tokens instead of running things into counter spells. So maybe this hand is still good enough. Ideally, we find Cavern of Souls to make our pirates uncounterable, or find some cheap hand disruption. Alright, Fatal Push isn't bad either. They might have a 1 mana cantrip here. Alright, so we can play Mindstone and still have Fatal Push available. So we're just going to push Malcolm now before they get a chance to protect it. Staff of Completion, I see. They want to proliferate those counters. Okay, now we get to resolve a Roaming Throne if we'd like. That seems good. Or we can just go for Admiral Brass. I think I like having the Roaming Throne in play before playing our commander. They could also still have a 1-mana counter up here, Wash Away. So we'll name a pirate. Hit for two. And don't have the mana to make pirate tokens here, sadly. And there's a brainstorm, which they were holding earlier. Okay, so not very confident in resolving Admiral Brace. So instead, 
could play Swashbuckler, attack, pay the mana from Captain in case they had a bound spell for a Roaming Throne. Or we can just attack first, see what happens. But then if they bounce Roaming Throne, I wouldn't be able to make any pirates whatsoever. Sadly, our land's tapped here, so we can't pay four mana. Opponent takes six. And we've got the city's blessing, so Swashbuckler now has double strike. Next turn, Larsenist gets double the triggers as well. Could exile two things. Contentious plan to proliferate. All right, so they're getting closer to that final counter. For now, we get to untap. And uh, yeah, I think it's still safer to go for Larsenist. And then I can pay four mana to make two pirates with a captain as well. As opposed to tapping out for Admiral Brass. A lofty denial, counter unless we pay four. Yeah, I did consider playing land first, just didn't want to give them perfect information. And they might have had another option in terms of counter spells. So attack. Pay the mana. And our opponent wants to slip out the back swashbuckler. Sure. Otherwise, we could have put them to one. Now they can still activate staff and then try and cheat something into play with Malcolm, which seems to be their plan. Malcolm attacks. And what do we see here? Omniscience would be pretty powerful. Sundering Titan, also quite good. Got Swamp Island and Mountain. Cure us to Sea God, make an 8 8, but our opponent is still dead here. Alright, GG's. Can finally play our commander, get double triggers from Roaming Throne, but no need. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the deepest might, and uh, we actually have the dream of connecting with Ragavan on the play. So hopefully, there's no one mana interaction. And then Ragavan can set up Captain Lannery. And an early Kindred Discovery can also be quite powerful. Well, let's see if Ragavan can connect. Or if it meets a Lightning Bolt here. And uh, play with Fire instead. Alright, that's too bad. So don't have an exciting turn two. I guess we can fetch, get an island, which we'll need for Kindred Discovery. And hope that Captain Lannery can get an attack in. Well, looks like it. Alright, that way we can still set up Admiral Brass, which can maybe get back Ragavan. So let's say they play the Deepest Might, then Lannery can still attack as a four-powered creature thanks to the two treasures. And of course, Ragavan will be a 4-4 as well. So that still looks like a good attack. If our opponent keeps up removal for Admiral Brass, we can maybe go for Kindred Discovery instead. Alright, Chandra is a nice one. Take out Lannery. Although it does mean the coast is clear for Admiral Brass. Opponent making mana. I guess that's one way to maybe protect Chandra. Alright, so play Admiral Brass, sacking the treasure. Still gonna get back Ragavan, send everyone at Chandra. It's gonna be the play. And 
and then we'll at least prevent Chandra from using the Minus to take out Admiral Brace. And now Karizev is probably even better. I guess they can block the Ragavan token, but then we're taking out Chandra. So we'll uh, go for Karizev, which in a way still gives us Ragavan, just not quite the same Ragavan. And with the extra Ragavan token, it also becomes easier to set up our Admiral back at Brass. So before damage, just want to pump Lannery to take out Electrostatic Field. Take out Chandra as well. So that was a pretty good turn. Don't expect too many sweepers out of this deck, since it plays a lot of creatures itself. And then now we could go for Admiral back at Brass over Kindred Discovery, since we don't even have double blue for it. Get Ragavan. Smash. And we might get to steal something here. I'll sack my treasure if they block there. So blocking Ragavan. Let's see here, this is 7, plus 5 is 12, so not quite lethal, so I don't think I'm sacking treasure for Lannery. So I'll play the Archer now. And back at Brass, steal the Deepest Might. Flame Breather, not super exciting by itself, and a Flamesmith as well. And an End of Festivities, alright. Would have been pretty effective with Electrostatic Field in play, and then Deepest Might could have dealt a million damage here, but GG's. Let's see if we get to play Kindred Discovery, since I haven't had the chance yet. Name Pirates, and get a nice attack in. That's a lot of card draw. Yeah, Kindred Discovery is good if you're developing and playing pirates, but it's also very good if you already have a few pirates in play. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing another dinosaur deck, this time with Pantlaza as commander. Our hand is lacking a bit of mana acceleration. Can't quite play one drop on turn one either because the sulfur falls entering tapped until we play an island first. So it has a few issues for sure. No black mana either. So this might be a mulligan. Alright, this is much better. Turn one thought sees. Mindstone to set up turn four Admiral Brace. And opponents got both Drover and Cultivate for ramp and Cinder Clasm to deal two to all our creatures. And uh, yeah, that would be pretty effective. Although I guess if they wipe the board, then Admiral Brass has more things to get back. So yeah, could see taking Drover as the only two mana play that they can do proactively. Although I guess Cinder Clasm would also potentially take out their own Drover if they don't have a Dino in play, but they're likely to just play the Hammer Skull. Okay, now we've got a free booter as well. Could run that out, and then next turn play Mindstone and Poisoner at instant speed. Don't actually hate taking Cultivate just to kind of throw them off curve a little bit. As opposed to taking the Cinder Clasm, which is still reasonable for sure. Just want to avoid turn 4 Pantlaza. And yeah, opponent takes out Freebooter as opposed to playing Hammer Skull. So now we get to play Mindstone 
keep up Poisoner and next turn Admiral Brace with at the very least Freebooter to get back. There's also an argument for playing Banner first, but uh, I think the sooner we get Admiral Brass going, the better. I guess our opponent does get to play Pantlas on next turn and likely block Admiral Brass, so at least with Banner we'll draw a few more cards in the process. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable, since it's not like Freebooter can take away their commander. And name Pirate. And this will give us a bit of a boost going into the late game. Although it's not impossible for the opponent's deck to take it out. Opponent found the swords. Can take out Poisoner. It's exiled, so can get it back with Admiral Brace. Well, now it's probably time to play our commander. And drew into a Larsonist, which is also quite good. And we'll be able to get back Freebooter. Which can have a look. And uh, yeah, opponent's got some scary creatures in there. Growing Rides, the only non-creature. Hit for five. I'm okay at turning this into a bit of a race. Next turn we can double spell Captain Larsonist. And our opponent finds a Realm Walker now. So we'll have to deal with Kaltan Mavern before we deal with Pantlaza. Take eight. Step one, Captain. See what we draw. Iron Crag, I can still play. And the Buccaneer we can play as well. So do I want to turn any of my permanents into a treasure? I don't think so. I guess if I sack Captain, I'll be able to get it back with Admiral Brass attacking. Currently don't have a pirate. So that actually benefits me. And then Galta. Sag this for... could also now cast a Captain, although we'll play the Buccaneer. And draw Swamp. Captain's back. And this would be an attack for 16, so one shy of lethal. Still seems worth going for. Put on chumps. And I'll play the captain as well. So hopefully they can take out my Larsonist at 5 toughness. It's not all that easy when they've already cast swords. So Hammer Skull discover, finding a Raptor, that's fine. And a Hatcher to give their team haste. Okay, that's a lot of damage here. But is it enough? So let's say we block Pantlaza. Can uh, Chump Hammer Skull trade for Raptor, still take seven. Or we can uh, keep some more creatures to make sure we have lethal next turn, although with my two flyers we already have enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yarok the Desecrated, an ETB deck. And uh, yeah, our hand's not bad. Freebooter into connections. Freebooter making sure they don't have an answer to our enchantment. And this can pull us ahead. Just by making a treasure token, we could set up a turn 4 Admiral Brace. So that's our plan. Let's see how it lines up. And 
we see Fauna Shaman, Rejuvenator for Ramp, Signet as well. Spell Pierce can counter connections. So I think I do take Signet. While our opponent could keep up Spell Pierce, they're more likely to play Fauna Shaman, and then we can resolve connections. If we let them keep Signet, they can play Signet into Spell Pierce. Just don't want them ramping in general. And if they do keep up Spell Pierce, we can adjust and play a creature instead. Opponent does step out for Fauna Shaman. So we get to play connections now. Although it is of course possible that our opponent finds some enchantment removal with Fauna Shaman. Something like a Masked Vandal they could still play for 2 mana after discarding a Rejuvenator. But we'll see. Opponent just plays Rejuvenator, so we do get to untap with connections. Draw a card, make a treasure, don't know if I'm making a shapeshifter as well, since the life loss could start adding up. But yeah, we are the aggressor right now. I think it's still reasonable. And then hope to mill a pirate here. Alright, we found Rune Raider or Karizev. Both are good. Karizev hits for 6. Rune Raider draws us extra cards, but I guess we already have connections doing so. So I think I prefer Karizev. That's a lot of damage coming across. And now if our opponent plays Yarok, we can use Poisoner as a trick to trade for Yarok. It's going to be an Anvil. Pitching a creature and an artifact, I guess, with Ornithopter, so both get a 2-mana discount now. A Reclamation, another Engine card. But yeah, our opponent's pretty far behind. And now, maybe just first two modes. Don't think we'll need the extra Shapeshifter on the off chance that our opponent's got a Sweeper. Firebrand, I could also sack to take out Rejuvenator and then get back with Admiral Brass, which might be better than Ruin Raider. Uh, yeah, that seems fine. And then could also attack with Mutavolts. Get back Firebrand. Smash. And then still have Poisoner available, plus we could maybe play Runner. I didn't do the math to see if we had lethal if we pumped something else. But it looks like we had lethal regardless. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing black-white vampires with a bit of a sacrifice theme. And our hand is sadly unable to play turn one Ragavan. So yeah, this might be a mulligan. This is a tiny bit better. Can play Scoundrel and then can uh, try and keep up Wash Away to counter the first of the Blessed. Curse of Silence going after Admiral Brass. At least we've got another 5 mana card lined up. So we can still play the Marauder for now. Could also try to bolt their commander instead. Eat the Swarm kills Marauder. And the third land enables Breaches, make a treasure. So not bad. Could already play Banner if we draw land, or make another treasure. Black Market Connections, we cannot counter, so that resolves. And we drew the land, so we get to play Banner, attack, make a treasure, and then I guess exile the top card, but I'm unlikely to be able to play it here.
Uh, Zephyr Singer will go to waste. But now we do have Wash Away for their commander available. And with a life loss from connections, the Bolt could also be a nice way to close out the game. Opponents all the way to 6. And yeah, our opponent explodes too far behind. No answer to breaches means we can prevent blocks and get in for 6 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the Explore deck. So Pirates vs. Explore Merfolk. And our hand is good, not perfect. Can't quite play Scoundrel turn 1. But I'm still gonna keep. With the Aerialist we can set up turn 4, Admiral Brass. And for now pass with Malcolm available. For now Ozolith. Also works quite well with Explore. Could use Larcenus to turn an artifact into a treasure. Ooh, a Roaming Throne is gonna benefit from being in play before we play a Larcenist as well. So for now, I guess Aerialist, even though that could also get doubled by a Roaming Throne. Okay, maybe attack first, see what we draw into. Yeah, I think I prefer Storm Tamer over Scoundrel. And then next turn we could Admiral Brass, although I likely just want to play a Roaming Throne first. Swordtooth to play additional lands. But they don't have the city's blessing yet. So yeah, could go for roaming throne here. I guess we'll wait and see if we draw into something better. Yeah, wash away is nice to have. So we can still keep that up alongside playing Roaming Throne. Naming Pirates. So now we can exile two things with Larcenists. If I use my treasure, I may not have the mana to play Admiral Brass next turn. Wild Growth Walker. Also pretty nice for the Explore deck. And they're going to grow it with Ozolith. Take our turn. Yeah, I don't think I can resist double Admiral Brass here. At the very least, we can get back some of the pirates we discarded earlier. And while wow, we actually milled Angrass Marauders. So that's one of our best possible cards. And then could go for... What else here? Captain Lannery Storm, perhaps. Double triggers thanks to Roaming Throne, attack. And yeah, that's gonna be game over. I think we're just dealing a lethal damage here thanks to the Marauders. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Sarkon, Blue Red, Dragons. Well, we've got a few counter spells for Sarkon. And then Lannery is pretty nice as well, although I guess Sarkon does block it quite profitably. So we'll just have to make sure it doesn't resolve. And uh, yeah, turn two, Cold Steel Heart on the play. And then turn three, maybe attack, keep up Wash Away. This will have to name Black. Opponent's got the Signets. Don't want to play Steam Vent since that would make it a little bit too obvious that we're keeping up a counter spell. Now we also have Dispersal available. And we'll happily counter Sarkon. And then we could already play Admiral Brace here. Hoping to mill a pirate. Alright, we found a pretty good one here. A neckbreaker, and then make another treasure. So we get to keep up dispersal. And our opponent could just be dead next turn, especially with a Beckett Brass pumping the team. 
and even potentially stealing the opponent's artifact. Yeah, that's not gonna resolve. So pretty much the ideal draw here on the play. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Aragorn the Uniter. And uh, our hand has some explosive potential with the Dark Ritual. So I'm kind of curious to see how that plays out. Can't quite play a one drop on turn one if we want to make sure we can play Signet. And then we can just go Signet plus maybe Storm Tamer on turn two and then turn three Ritual into Admiral Brass perhaps. Hmm. Could also now go with Signet, Ritual, play Herald's Horn, which will discount all our pirates. And then if I draw land next turn, I can still play Admiral Brass. I think that's more upside than only using Ritual on Admiral Brass. If there's a creature on top, it's going to be likely to be a pirate, so Herald's Horn will draw it, and then hopefully there's a land following it. And if there's just a land on top, we can still play a 4-mana Brass. A Roaming Throne, I guess, the exception, since it's not technically a uh, pirate. Alright, so that's a bit unfortunate here. We'll have to wait at least another turn, but Roaming Throne is quite good with Admiral Brass. And then, sure, we'll play Rigging Runner. It's just a small creature. Probably wanted to tap differently to keep Poisoner available. I guess Auto Tapper didn't want to deal myself one damage. We'll make it work. Now we get to maybe double the Poisoner with Roaming Throne. Opponent perhaps keeping up removal for Admiral Brace. Storm Tamer could protect it, but that will require one more mana. Alright, we've got our land now. So, maybe start by attacking. Can use Poisoner as a trick. And then, if they take it, we can still play Roaming Throne, which may get answered instead. But with a ward, it's a bit more difficult. Yeah, I don't think we want to play our commander here. So, sure, let's attack. Maybe attacking with Rigging Runner is not necessary. But if we take out Mary, then Mox Amber also stops making mana, so it's actually pretty relevant. And if they use removal on Runner, we could still use Storm Tamer to protect. Soaring City. So let's see here. Counter spell or ability that targets a creature. This is still an ability. Alright, so Mary down. And not bad. And now we could go for Roaming Throne before Admiral Brass, but that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Shelob, Child of Ungoliant. And our hand's not bad. Sailor into Malcolm into Breaches can immediately make lots of treasure. And then Malcolm can help us discard whatever pirate we want to put in Graveyard for Admiral Brass. Once they do eventually play the spider, they'll make it difficult for flyers to attack, of course. And we can expect quite a bit of removal out of the black-green deck, since removal synergizes with our commander, especially fight spells. So we'll see what happens. For now, play Sailor. And our opponent's got the turn three connections, also quite good. All right, let's go for breaches here. Name pirate. Attack, making treasure, exiling the top card as well. Can't quite play arcane signet. 
And yeah, I think we discard maybe the Forerunner, so that if I reanimate it with Admiral Brass, we can get maybe Angras Marauders, and then discard that on the following turn. But we could also see a Sweeper here. And I guess now with Castle Garenbrig they could cast a 6-drop, although not quite Shelob since it also requires black mana. So Augur into Lenor Elves, and we actually drew the Marauders. So I can discard it with Malcolm to set it up for next turn, but they might answer Admiral Brass in the meantime. I think it's still the play, get back Forerunners, get a nice attack in, making some treasure. Could also now go for Corsair Captain. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Pump the team and make a treasure token. So we've got all three modes on breaches. And the wash away, I guess, is going to go to waste here. Would have been an awesome answer to Shelob. Bodon takes it all. And I could discard Marauders. Could also hard cast it next turn thanks to the treasures. So maybe it's safest to just discard a land for now. We have plenty more pirates we can reanimate. Bones at five, so connections is turning into a drawback. But we could now see Shelob into a fight spell. Great Henge can gain them some life back. But they still seem pretty far behind. A bite down answers Malcolm. And yeah, we can just play Marauders before attacking, still get back a creature from the graveyard, and that's game. Alright, so we get to see our back at Brass Pirates in action, and the deck was quite impressive. The commander has an immediate impact when you play it, just gotta make sure to play around opposing removal, taking it out at instant speed, and then ideally if you've got a treasure maker to play the turn ahead of schedule or some other ramp card, it can also make the deck a lot more explosive, so definitely look for those mana ramp cards in your opening hand. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.